This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Everybody, another week, another no money. Uh, no, uh, another week, another wonderful series of shows uh, featuring the Citizens Panel. And also, uh, every night we try to start off our show with an interview with one of our old comic friends. Uh, tomorrow night, by the way, Stephen Pearl will be here. But right now, it's time to look at yet one of our favorite people, one of the funniest people I know. And of course, well, We'll introduce it right here, okay? All righty. Uh, yeah, uh, pure gold, pure gold. That's what you 14 are. Fourteen carat. Larry Bubbles Brown is pure, utter fucking motherfucking <laughs> cock sucking gold. You don't no, think I'm you're fun? You don't think you're funny, do you? Uh, I think I've uh, outlived my usefulness, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think 85 I was on fire, but that's a long time ago. So. Yeah, yeah. But no, you're, you're, you're as funny as you've ever been. You know? I don't know. I just feel like I, I've done this so long, I just feel like it's, it's you know, you maybe I've lost a love to try to be funny, but I just hope I'm not boring people at this point. So. No, you're not. Not at all. Uh, but I do live in the past, as you know, and uh, I, the other day I was thinking about the first time I did, I did your show was The Quake in uh, January of 83, and you'd been on, I guess before that you'd been on Camel here. Yeah. And I was trying to think, uh, what was the first live comedy show you did? The first, what do you mean, first live, you, you're talking about the radio or are you talking about the, in clubs? In clubs. When in you clubs? Were. I think that was while I was at uh, it was while I was at the Quake, and it was called an Alex and Joe show. And we did it. I can't remember where we did it. Some, you know, hotel that had a giant conference room or something, and that's where uh -huh. we did it. Although we did one earlier with Doctor Gonzo, out in the East Bay, we did something, and it was called kind of an Alex and Joe show. I, some they started as Alex and Joe shows, and then when uh, when I left uh, uh, the Quake, uh, they of course became Alex Bennett shows uh, because uh, uh, Joe couldn't come with me. Uh, but uh, that was you know that that was it was at the it was at the Quake that we started doing live comedy shows. Okay, and those were successful from the start. Uh yeah, amazingly so. We were we were amazed at the at the amount of people that would show up, and that lasted for many many years. I mean, where oh, every, yeah. every I, one of I, our I, shows I doing eighty six was my first one I did with you. We did Tommy T's and Conquer, and it was huge crowds. Yeah, and it was uh, it was uh, a um, uh, the the crowds usually it was always a sellout. They usually sold out sometimes within hours of the tickets going on sale. Yeah. Uh, and it remained that way for quite a while. And then uh, it started to take longer to sell out, you know. And in some cases, a few shows weren't sold out. Uh, but that you could see kind of the slowing down of comedy at that point. And, yeah, um, I think the peak was at uh, the Frost Amphitheater show you did in Stanford in '87. The first one, there were there were, there were two, was that? There were two of them we did, and the first one we yeah. did nine thousand people showed up. Yeah, and I remember uh, Bob Weeder wrote in the Chronicle, "This has to be the uh, the apex of comedy. It can't get any bigger than this." And, and I think it did start to go down. And I that. don't think it didn't get any better, bigger than that. I did a, I no. did a, I did the Frost again, and I think we did maybe seven thousand people, which is not nothing to sneeze at, but it wasn't the same as the first time. And I could s slowly see that it was starting to die down. Although uh, there was also a time when there were there were money problems financially, and uh, so I started running my shows and running them. I called them the first. Remember the first recession special and the second recession special yeah, yeah. and third recession special. And I ch sold tickets for like fifteen bucks. 
It was like really cheap. Because by uh-huh. then comedy, going to see comedy was going to cost you 50 bucks easy for you and a girl and the drinks, you know. Right. And I wanted people to get out of there. And there was no uh, drink minimum at these things. We didn't tell people they had to have a two drink minimum or whatever. And um, it was at a very nice place, Great American Music Hall. You know, but we be, we began to see the thing kind of die down, and uh, the comedy business getting a bit on the soft side. You know, uh, I know. And, and a lot of it had to do. You know what it had to do with? I'll tell you what was wrong with comedy clubs, and I I don't know if you'll agree or disagree with me, but where in anywhere in show business is it a good idea to have a comedy act followed by a comedy act followed by a comedy act? I I was talking to somebody about that the other day, and I thought it's a horrible idea. And that's why when we did the Frost Amphitheater, I brought in animal acts and things like that, <laughs> and magicians, and you know other th- people other than comics. You never have two magicians or two singers in a row. Well, I I felt that, uh, and then here, here's what also went wrong at these clubs. What they would do is they would always put the worst comic on first. Hmm. The second worst comic on second, and then you had your headliner. Now, when I ran a show, I'd run five comics. And where do you think I put the second best comic? Uh, first. Middle of the show. Oh, excuse me, first. You're absolutely right. The second best comic always went on first. And I would have to say to comics, like Warren Thomas once said to me, am I that bad that I'm going on first? And I said, no, that has nothing to do with whether you're good or bad. It has to do with the fact that you're the second best person around here and I need a strong opener. They would always put the weakest opener first. That was the, well, that was the uh, I supposedly Mitzi Shore invented this format of the uh, 15, 30, 45 minute sets and the, the first the first act would be the MC would be the guy who'd been doing it the least amount of time, which is uh, which is actually a horrible idea to start a show with a weak act. It really gets the show off to a bad start. Well, that's and, why uh, I never did. I and and I never told anybody when they were the middle act that they were the middle act because they were the worst <laughs> of, of, of the of the bunch. Not, not that I would hire any bad comics, but of all the comics, he, they were not they were the 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 weakest. Let's say. Yeah, you know, so not you, that they didn't have the right thing. Yeah, you know, I, either that or they had an act which was so kind of unusual and and they had never been seen before and whatever that I wanted to put them in the middle of all of this rather than you know have them start it off as an example. Yeah, you put me on second the first show I did with you, and I was, I was like relieved because I hated opening shows and yeah, uh, yeah I always open I always open somebody strong. You know, yeah, uh, and uh, you finish with the headliner or the supposed mm-hmm. headliner, and I always hated headliner because you could have some comics on the show were just as funny as the headliner, but because they didn't have the following, they weren't considered the headliner. You know, like uh, well, co- yeah. yeah, like you There's were. Been you, many mistakes, I think, in the comedy business. I, I, I never liked the three. Uh, Boss needs to do a four act uh, format where the headliner was the MC. Yeah, which they kind of worked pretty well, and everybody everybody did twenty minutes. So. Yeah, but uh, I had everybody do about the same amount of time except the headliner. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, what was it? What was it that um, it, it just you know it, it it it's important I think that at comedy shows if you're going to do this format of a comedian followed by a comedian followed by a comedian you've got to put some variety into that so you've got to take into consideration what the act does how it does it how it's different than other acts you know and put them all in these uh, different places it was we did a lot of soul searching every time we did a show who goes on first who goes on second who goes on third sounded like an Abbott and Costello routine thank you very much <laughs> ladies and gentlemen I'll be here all week. But so, those were great shows. Uh, I remember that. Yeah, yep, they were. Uh, you know, and, uh, and 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 we tried to pay everybody good. No, you paid well. You know, and uh, it, they it, it, and and I I'll tell you, I paid well and I made a fortune off of them. I wish I had it today, but I you know I spent it all taking comedians out to lunch. So you know, <laughs> I feel bad about that now. We all, I always thought this. 
I thought the studio was paying well, for those well, lunches. Well, well, here's what I figured. You know, if I took them out to lunch and they became famous, someday when I no longer was big, they'd take me out <laughs> to lunch. Well, I'm sitting here still waiting for lunch, you know. Well, if I come back, I'm taking you to lunch. Hey, Goldthwaite, when are you taking me to lunch? <laughs> All those times I took you to that sushi bar and filled your fat little gullet. You know. <laughs> come on, where's my lunch? I there were these guys at uh, at uh, Sirius when they when I got fired. My my uh, I, I could call them my bosses. I guess the program director and and uh, another guy. And uh, they came down uh, uh, the la- for the last show, and after the last show, they said to me, uh, when you feel up to it and you've kind of settled with, uh, with all of this, uh, we want to have lunch with you. And I'm thinking, you know, they want to have lunch with me. They want to talk about something that I'm going to continue to do here at some point. And I said, well, I mean, is it going to be a good lunch? And they said, yeah, no, we just like to take you to lunch, you know. I said, oh, okay. So about... F- Three weeks later, four weeks later, I figure, um, I think I'm ready for that lunch, okay? I'd been sitting on my ass for three weeks, and I couldn't stand that. Mm -hmm. So I call up one of the guys, and I say, um, okay, I think I'm ready for that lunch now. And he says to me, well, so-and-so's going to be out of town next week, and then I'm going to be out the week after that. So why don't we call you maybe uh, the week after that, and we'll figure out something, okay? I said, okay. It is now four years later, (laughs) and I've yet to get a call about lunch. (laughs) And I've often had this just insane desire to just write a note off to one of these guys, the program director for the the, uh, uh, political channels. Just a little note that says, uh, don't bother to ask me out to lunch. I've already eaten. (laughs) <laughs> you should do it. And, and I keep thinking about doing them, and people say, oh, don't do that. You'll burn your bridges. I say, I, I've, what bridges? No, but they're not hiring me back over there. I could tell them to go fuck themselves, and it wouldn't matter, you know. But uh, it's Probably so, more likely to get a job by doing that. Probably, yeah, yeah. He's got a lot of nerve. Let's hire that guy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> you know, then I can work for their lousy $35,000 a year that they pay everybody, you know. Uh, wow, is that bad? Oh, Holy it's that Christ. bad. It's that bad in radio. God. You know, they, you know no more. It used, to, it, there, it used to be a pretty good paying business, you know. I mean, if you were starting out, yeah, you worked some shit jobs. But basically, it, the business paid pretty well. It doesn't anymore because there is no business there. They all know they're dying. You know, there's a the iHeartRadio has probably more stations than any other operation in the country, and it the word is now it's going to go bankrupt. That's what I heard the other day. They might be bankrupt. And Cumulus, which is another big outfit, is close to bankruptcy. And you know, this is this is bad. This is really bad. All these stations go bankrupt. All of a sudden, communities have these. Here's what I, years ago, I was always worried about uh, McDonald's, like when they were building like thousands and thousands and thousands of McDonald's. And I said, one day, somebody's not going to care about the business. And they're going to let these things all go to rot. And all of a sudden, you're going to, on every street corner in America, have this festering, horrible thing there that they don't take care of. And it hasn't happened yet. I mean, I have to give McDonald's credit. But the thing is, you're going to have all these radio stations that can't afford to keep the lights on. And what's going to happen to communities that rely on radio stations for information? Somebody told me he thought in two years the AM dial would be gone. Well, the new guy in the FCC wants to save AM, which I think is an idiotic move. Uh, AM. AM is a technology that was the first technology, and it served well for many years, but now the quality of FM and also the quality of what you get on the Internet. I mean, this show going out right now sounds better than anything you, most, most anything you get on FM, you know. And um, so, I, you know, I, it, 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 these things are... Uh, we don't get used to the idea that some things die, like my career. 
uh, <laughs> you know, that some things die and that they're replaced by other things. Maybe not as good as the old stuff, but they're replaced by something else. And the Internet has replaced mass communications. And these guys were a little too late into the game. Uh, and, and so they're all going to suffer for it. I mean, iHeartRadio has basically tried to become a Internet thing. And um, it they were into it too late. They came to the came to the game too late. Plus, they're radio people. It's kind of like me. I've got a problem with the internet because I do really a very traditional radio show, and that's not how the internet is really constructed. I'm just using it as my outlet because I have this outlet. But um, you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty terrible out there, and it, it, ain't, is, it right? ain't getting it's- any better. How the change, it was maybe 10 or 15, maybe 15 years ago, radio was so still so hot. They Remember, they were flipping stations, and people were making billions of dollars, and now, and 10 years later, it's practically gone. Well, what happened is it was deregulation, which was uh, Clinton's deal. And by deregulating, he, he allowed people to own almost as many radio stations as they could, you know, it's like, like a all-you-can-eat buffet. And uh, the trouble with that is is that keeping these lights on on all these stations was ridiculous because they would buy some stations. Oh, yeah, if you buy a really like in, in San Francisco, if you bought a station like KSFO, okay, great. That's a money-making, wonderful station. But also part of the group you probably bought also had some station nobody ever listened to and you you could turn off the signal and nobody would miss it. But they had to keep that one on, the, the lights on on that one, too. So the more lights you had to keep on, the less money you had for everything else. Oh, it got, it's just miserable. At one point, Clear Channel, which became iHeartRadio, had 1,200 radio stations. Wow. You know, and, and try, try keeping all the lights on on those things and, and making a profit. It's just terrible. So deregulation was the worst thing that ever happened to broadcast. That was yeah, that was Clinton. Yeah, and who was the uh, who was the big guy that was flipping? It was Mel Carmazan, Remember? Yeah. Oh, my, I worked for Mel at at um, um, at, at Sirius. Uh, yeah, I was. Is he still around? No, he's retired pretty much, or what? Maybe he's maybe he's doing an internet broadcast. I don't know. Anyway, he no, he's. He, I think he's retired, <laughs> or at least not visible. Okay. But Mel is a guy who I uh, I turned down a job from once uh, in uh, Washington D.C. Uh, outside of Washington, and um, uh, because I felt he was trying to get me out of San Francisco, which he really was, so he could make the world safe for Howard Stern in San Francisco, which he eventually put Howard Stern on the very station in the slot that I had. But uh, uh, I. Uh, I, I he, they wanted me to go to work for them and and uh, it was all set. The only thing I had to do was literally physically quit my job at uh, the at at uh, Live One Hundred and Five so that they wouldn't then be legally responsible for having to try to hijack me away from somebody else. So they said they couldn't officially offer me the job till I quit at Live One Hundred and Five, and I didn't trust that. You know, uh, how yeah, could, that I, sounds a little. So I decided not to go with them. And it was partially out of a out of a, uh, a feeling I had for Mel Karmas and that I had heard that you know he was, uh, all kinds of horrible things about him. Well, it turns out he's one of the most honest people in the broadcasting business. One of the reasons he said that is he didn't want to be accused of poaching some talent, you know. But then once the talent was free, he was free to take them, and he would have done it because he was an honorable guy. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know that. I'd heard all these terrible stories about Mel Karmas and him. So anyway, I went to work eventually at Sirius, and he came to Sirius as the uh, as as the head of the company. And uh, I met him in the break room one day, and I said, "Hi, Mel. I, let me introduce myself. I'm Alex." Because he always would go to the break room to get his coffee in the morning himself, not some underling. And uh, he said, "Oh, Alex." He says, "Of course I know you, Alex. I'm a fan." Well, I loved him from that moment on. Yeah. 
And he was great to work for because I learned really? something. Wow. Yeah, I learned something about Mel. That, and I, I wish I had taken that job. I learned something about Mel. And what I learned was this guy was principled and uh, he loved talent. And he revered talent and he paid talent well. And he was very good to talent. It was the salespeople he was horrible to. He was just, he ran them like it was a slave ship, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, but when it came to talent, man, he loved talent. He loved to nurture talent. So as long as he was there, I was safe because um, just his attitude towards me, made me the, gave me the feeling I was safe as long as he was there. When he left, then all bets were off, and within a few years, I was out of there. Uh, but uh, Mel Carmazan, uh, to me, is was the best person I've ever I've ever worked for as a talent, and getting the support as a talent. Now I didn't know him that much, and I didn't talk to him that much, but it was the things he did, you know, that um, made me just really admire him. And uh, I would occasionally see him in the I saw him in the break room. The weekend after Sirius almost went under, when the stock price was at five cents, yeah. <laughs> and somehow over that weekend he had found somebody to come in and buy forty percent of the company and save it. Okay, and I saw him and I said, "Happy good weekend." He says, "You have no idea." And then he literally took time to tell me what went on. It's like he wanted to get it off his chest, and he said, "He says you don't know how close we came to having the lights turned off this, on Monday." Wow. He said, "But we at the last minute, I brokered this deal with John Malone." He said, "And the lights are on." And I said, "Well, on behalf of everybody here, I want to thank you for saving our jobs." He says, "Don't thank me." He says, "Just be happy, <laughs> you know, and enjoy yourself." I mean, it was he didn't have have to talk to me at that point because yeah, it was a rough one, you know, and left. But he sat there. And it must have been ten minutes. He talked to me about it, mm-hmm. you know. And I I liked the guy. I really liked the guy. He gen and he was genuinely an honest and principled broadcaster. And uh, that was the other thing about him. See, I'd heard horrible stories about Mel. You want to hear the worst one I ever heard? And Yo, well, that's I'd always heard like he was a nightmare and horrible. And <laughs> no, but he wasn't. I mean, he I, he came into Live One Hundred Five when they bought Live One Hundred Five and terrorized our uh, general manager, uh, Pat uh, uh, McNally. McNally uh, just terrorized him. That's the only thing I knew about him. Okay. But when I finally went to work for him, I found out it was a different story altogether. But um, the, the, the story they tell about Mel, and I don't know if this is true, but that Mel was uh, really just irritated with some general manager. And so he got out of the building they were at, where Infinity was or whatever, and he's walking down Fifth Avenue. And all of a sudden he sees across the street the general manager of that radio station. And he walks into the middle of the street and he starts yelling at this guy. You know, motherfucker, you did this and you did that and blah, 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 and down to that. And, and the guy goes, Mel, you're standing in the middle of Fifth Avenue. A car's going to hit you. And he yells back, supposedly, this is the legend no car hits uh, Mel Carmazan until I say a car can hit Mel Carmazan. <laughs> so. I thought good line. I, uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty pretty good. If it's true, if it's true, it may be legend. It may be somebody thought this up and you know came up with it. But boy, what a what a what a what a great guy! What a great guy! I was I, I, and I the biggest mistake I ever made in my career was not going to Washington D.C. You know, because the guy would have hired me. Because mm-hmm. the implication was that he would, but the reason he wouldn't hire me till I quit was also his principles. So, you know, I I didn't realize that at the time. Big mistake, but at least I got to work with the guy, you know. And he is the guy responsible for for uh, uh, Howard Stern's career because well, he's the, he's the guy that stood up against the FCC and defended him and said, "I'm not I'm not firing this guy. I'm not letting this guy go, and I'm not paying the fine." 
And then he argued that he didn't have to pay the fine because it was arbitrary. And, you know, he, he, he did things that no other broadcaster before him had done. And it was a wonderful, wonderful thing. And he, he's a great guy. Hey, well, listen, we got to call this quits for now. Uh, but uh, well, you want to come back next week, I guess, huh? If I'll have me, I'll be here. If I'll have you, you'll be there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. And it's time for me to turn on my camera and say hi to all of you and uh, how you doing. And uh, uh, let me turn another light on here so you get a better light on me. Okay, That's, this is for the TV people. For the radio people, yeah, you just heard me go off camera to turn on the, uh, the other light. There we go. See, see how much prettier I look? I'm also, uh, I've also done more of a close-up on me so that you can get the horror of how old I have gotten. Uh, let me uh, adjust this a little bit. There we go. Okay, we're, uh, we're ready to go here. Let me see here. Let me open up the, uh, the Skype lines uh, so that we can all uh, together uh, enjoy our little, uh, our little gathering here. Uh, our lines are now, let me see here. Push the button. Lines are now officially open, and uh, all you have to do is uh, give me a call. You can use either Skype or you can use the phone. If you use Skype, it's uh, our Skype ID is, so that you will uh, be aware of it, uh, it it's uh, GabNet Live. GabNet Live. That's what you use to get to us on Skype. If you want to call us on the phone, I always have to go look at the number because I'm very bad at remembering numbers. 347-352-0079. 347-352-0079. Those are the numbers to call. And uh, so now all I do is I sit here and I twiddle my thumbs. See, if, you, if you're watching us on uh, Facebook, wait a minute. I'm trying. I forgot how to twiddle my thumbs. I'm twiddling my thumbs. Uh, and if you're uh, not on uh, Skype, uh, uh, if you're not on uh, Facebook, uh, you can imagine me twiddling my thumbs. Because this is when I wait for people to call. And so far, there's no sign of anybody starting to call me. So why don't we uh, we'll just sit here and... Uh, uh, I, I could play a spot. No, I don't want to play a spot. You've heard those promos over and over again. I got to make some new promos up. But the problem is I've lost my voice in a way because Rob Alfano in his move shut down his studio. And so uh, I, I can't get any new promos from him till September. So most of the promos I will do will probably just have me on them. And I do not have a great announcing voice. I've never felt I had great announcing voice. People always said to me, why don't you go out for voiceovers and things like that? And I go, I just don't, I just don't think I have a great voice for radio, you know. So uh, for commercials, I have a good enough voice for radio. But uh, for commercials, eh, you know, I've played some here that I've done from time to time. Uh, but I see Phil Myers coming on the line. I see John Rockwell's coming on the line. Now all we got to do is get them so that I can talk to them. That would be nice. And here comes Phil. Hello, Phil. How are you this evening, my friend? Let me uh, let me uh, uh, go over to. Uh, uh, there we go. There's Phil. Hello, my friend. Yes. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I'm I'm just fine. Uh, you know. Are you feeling better? Uh, no. No. No, I'm still. I've still got uh, problems with the old. The knee is hurting, but it, I, last night I slept with a pillow between my legs. Yeah, and uh, that for some reason now I've lost your camera. Phil. Yeah, don't, uh, don't call Marjorie a pillow. Uh, right, uh, <laughs> and 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 but it felt better this morning. So we'll see what happens. Now you're both twirling. What really? is this? Yeah, come on, quit twirling. I, I, there we go. No, uh, Scott uh, is. is Oh man, oh man! I just, I just, you know, Skype uh, is so there. There we got Scott. So probably yeah. Phil will pop in any minute now. Uh, off and on the yeah, turn him off, off and on, and probably it'll happen eventually. You know, yeah. if one other person calls, it'll probably pop right in. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, no, so I, uh, I felt a little better today, but but here's a terrible thing. Uh, getting a doctor. Oh come on. 
Phil's screen, will you pop in already? I, I give it a, there yeah. we go. Here comes Rob Alfano calling. I bet he'll be okay. Hello, Rob. Hello. Yeah, Happy t- Tuesday. Turn on your camera. Oh, uh, it is on, but I, for some reason. There now. you go. And let's see if you pop in. There, you just popped in, but Phil Meyer's still spinning. I I'll, see Phil. You see I'll, Phil? I, you see, I, I, I don't see Phil here myself. Yeah, well, you, I, I'm doing the pop in, pop out. So let me, let me try it here. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, it doesn't matter. We don't have to see your face. Yeah, so uh, it's funny how some people can see him and other people, like I, I can't. Uh, now I see him. Now I got yeah. him. Now we got them all. Okay. See, it matters that I see him because that's what's going out over the air. You know, so. Every time you say that, it makes me think of that Bruce Willis movie where the kid says, I see dead people. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, yeah. What, what was that? The I, Sixth Sense? I see old people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, Scott, you're the youngest one of the group. I know. And I'm I think. almost 60. How old, how old are you? 59. And you, Phil? 62. And you, Rob? 60. So, and you're how old again, Scott? 32. 59. Uh, no. 59. Okay, so he he's the youngest one. He's the he's the kid in the crowd. Jesus. He's the one we're going to beat up in the uh, in 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 the schoolyard, you know, right. and 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 steal his lunch. You know, do things like that. Yeah. I was never that kind of kid. I never could steal another kid's lunch. No, you just waited for somebody else to beat him up, and you take what fell out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Let somebody else do the job. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, so so the leg is, uh, it, I'm going to physical therapy tomorrow. And maybe that'll do something for it. I don't know. I've never had anybody here had physical therapy. I have. Yeah, a few yeah. times. Does it work? Well, yeah, it's... I mean, you know what it is. It's it's only going to work if you make it work. That's what I found because I'm lazy, mm-hmm. and I've had every time I've had physical therapy, they expect that you know you're only going to get a session that works while you're there, and then they're going to say go home and do these exercises. Yeah, and that's when you go. Eh, I don't feel like doing that, and so yeah. it doesn't work. So it doesn't work. <laughs> I see. He's right. not he's not going to massage something and make it feel. Yeah, better. they'll do yeah. something and all that, but in the end, it it it's not physical therapy that you just have them do when you go home and you sit in front of the computer all night, right. you, you, they're going to make you do uh, stuff that you might not want to do. And that's it's when no happy ending. Hello to John Rockwell, by the way. Hi, John. Hello there. Turn on your uh, camera. If oh, it's, it's another one of those things again. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. weird. I have to turn the, turn the thing off and then turn it back on and then yeah. it works. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. It's the great, it's the great gods of Skype. Anyway, um, I had once I, I one day I did something or another. You know these things you need physical therapy for. Never anything. You'd think you maybe climbing a mountain you would get it or doing some kind of physical activity. I don't know. I just moved my back wrong and I pinched a nerve back here, mm. and so I had to go to the uh, the uh, comedy uh, big comedy festival up in Montreal, and it was about five days away and i was in dire pain so they sent me to a physical therapist and he like put electric stuff on me that like those uh, those uh, round those round discs yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. called a tense the, machine the uh, chiropractors use them yeah uh, but but it's also it's it, the what reason they used it was that it, it it literally massages in a very heavy way the muscle okay it feels great and it feels yeah. it, 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 it at the time it doesn't it feels great, but then later on I found that that muscle ached and it ached like I had worked it out. Then you had it up too high. And, and, and no, I didn't do it. Somebody else was doing it. Uh, well, you can control the intensity, or they could. It, I was told the reason why is that it's actually exercising the muscle. Right. You know, and so that's why it feels like a muscle that's just been exercised. Mm. Yeah. So it, I. It, it, I it, it contracts it and then lets it go and contracts. It's just like any workout. Yeah. That you so, do really. so I asked the guy the next time I saw him, do you think you can put these all over my body? Maybe I can lose some weight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and not the, after run. You can just lay they there. used to have hmm. one of those machines, and they say it was a farce. They'd wear it around their waist, and it would push in and out, in and out. It was like a little piston that was in there. Well, supposedly, uh, yeah. they do have weight loss things for this. Do you remember? I guess when I was a kid and they used to talk about people going to uh, 
uh, places to lose weight or whatever. There would be machines that they would use. I mean, they didn't look like they did anything. Oh, the ones you wrap around your tuchus and they would uh, yeah, and they would yeah, gyrate. Yeah, and shake. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah remember those? Classic. Yeah, but I think yeah. they I think they were close. It's just they didn't know by applying electric shock to the muscle. You actually you can make any muscle if I, if I did it right, and I don't know how to do it. But I had one of these tens machines, and I and I put a couple of electrodes in the right place. I could make your arm go up and down. Yeah, we yeah. used to do that in biology class when we dissected right. the frog. Yeah, right. well, I ain't no <laughs> fucking battery frog. and you made the legs jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Frog abuse. Right. Frog abuse. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were dead already. Yeah, they were they were dead already. Or semi-dead. Who, who cares? Is that what they told you? Yeah. We yeah, killed right. them. We know they're dead. They we killed them. Oh. Mm -hmm. So anyway. the, the, the first week we got to have frog races with them. The yeah. second week we killed them and took them apart. That's what they get for losing. <laughs> really? <laughs> what did the right. winning frog get? Uh, the winning frog got nothing. He, yeah. he got to live another day. He got steak, he got steak knives. Right. <laughs> Turned into he a prince. Right. Right. We actually had mice we gave cancer to. Oh, lovely. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. How'd you do with that? I, yeah, how'd you we do that? Injected, we injected cancer cells into these mm -hmm. white lab mice. My high school biology teacher couldn't believe that it, our whole class killed off a whole bunch of fruit flies. He said, you can't, fruit flies grow like anything. How could you kill the fruit fly? We did. I don't know what we did, but you know, our, our bunch of fruit flies, one generation, gone. <laughs> don't know why. <laughs> they just came out with a patch. I saw it on a Kickstarter thing that you wear and it gets rid of mosquitoes. So, really? Uh, yeah. It, it, oh, yeah. It was developed from malaria. But, uh, you know, I guess, uh, you know, if you go to tropical environments, it sounds like a fabulous thing. Just it's about an inch uh, square. Yeah. And, and so just, it, uh, it, when you say it gets rid of them, means it, you repel them? They, yeah, they just won't yeah, I think so. Yeah. You? Wow. Yeah, like, yeah. Florida is doing, have you heard about what Florida is doing? They're bringing in. Zika? What's that? Because of Zika, right. They're, they're bringing in uh, the genetically altered males. That are that they're, they're releasing every couple of days mm -hmm. to to mate with the females, which either sterilize or kill the females mm. to stop Zika and and all these uh, mosquito borne diseases because it's really getting serious. Wow, it's, it's a funny thing. Every time they bring in something to stop something else, it creates another problem. Oh well, yeah, you're road. messing with you're messing with uh, yeah, like you know, Trump. Like yeah. Trump, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bit of boom, bit of bit boom, boom bit of boom. See uh, here that his uh, his daughter got the hissed and they hissed and booed her in Germany. Really? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> they thought she was Jewish. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, she has she converted? Yes. yes. Yeah. So Damn. she she is Jewish. That's why they hissed her in Germany. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They asked her about her 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 father's. Uh, you know how he treats you know his his history with women and she went on and they didn't like her answer they hissed and booed her <laughs> yeah well, of course, of course she said he's oh he's fantastic with women yeah. he loves you know right? yeah yeah he loves women yeah. all of them yeah uh yeah uh, i saw an ad for that uh new new program on stars the white princess first mm -hmm. thing i thought is "Ooh, the ivana trump story <laughs> <laughs> You know what somebody commented on? And I, I saw it. Uh, I was watching uh, The Circus, this show that they do on uh, Showtime. And they showed the uh, the tossing of the hat that the kid wanted to have signed, right, at the at the Easter egg roll. But somebody oh had mentioned something else about that Easter egg roll, and I looked at it, and they were absolutely right. They said, where are the black people? There were no black people there. It was all white. They were painting the eggs. Yeah, they were painting the eggs. Yeah, but they were all white. Uh, so you know, uh, that a lot of the schools that normally got uh, usually get invitations. I don't think did this year. They either got different schools or different organizations uh, bringing people in. But yeah, I think uh, when they were starting to get closer to Easter, the schools that like some of the schools that Obama's people sent invitations to her like what happened to the invitations didn't i hear that somewhere they were going to usually have the kids it, yeah. but didn't i hear that somewhere they were going to they were going to cancel the uh, easter egg roll i don't know if it's cancel it just wasn't really rolling very it wasn't happening as quickly and people thought, oh god they're not you know they haven't figured out how to do an egg roll 
<laughs> well, they don't have they haven't they don't have three quarters of the staff hired, so maybe there wasn't enough people to get it done. I wonder if this year he's not going to pardon the turkey because he believes in capital punishment. <laughs> <laughs> I kill that bird. You know, I always found that the stupidest thing the president does all year. I, I mean, if I if, if I were the president, I would feel embarrassed to have to do that. You know, that's one of those things. Yeah, but it's you know, it's really stupid. It is silly. Yeah, it is silly. He could make the turkey the new press secretary. <laughs> Get rid the, of the, spice. the turkey already is the new press secretary. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I watched him today. You know, I decided that I can watch. Uh, real events that are happening in real time and are not going to be interpreted by anybody, you know, so that I'm thinking and, you know, observe it and make up my own mind. And I watched him for about five minutes. I couldn't take it. What, I mean, what, he, what he real was, event? Th what he was Spicy. doing today was he was listing all the accomplishments in the first hundred days of Trump, of which there are none. Actually, there are no oh, legislative. Hold on a second. There are no legislative things that have happened in the first hundred days under Trump, just a bunch of executive orders, which you can, you know, you can spit out like a mimeograph. Which he did. Which he did. He he has signed some ele some legislation, uh, like uh, with the uh, with the selling of the uh, histories on your computer. Yeah, it's been enacted. I, yeah. I don't know when it's going to come into be enforced, but he has signed things like that. He just hasn't done anything on his list of. The things he wanted to get done, like uh, health care and things like that. He had, he had this checklist and stuff, and he hasn't done any of that. that hasn't lowered he's taxes, done hasn't done anything with health care, uh, hasn't, no, uh, wall. hasn't uh, no wall, not even close to building it. Um, I mean, not that I want him to, but that he did promise it. They're, they're talking people. about getting the money that they seized from uh, that drug dealer, El Chapo. Mm -hmm. I think it's $14 billion. Yeah. And they're talking about uh, that using that money to build the wall. So we're we're using drug money to build the walls, basically. What Mexico to keep the drug people out. <laughs> See, if I used drug money to do that kind of thing, they'd uh, they'd if Obama had done that, they would assail him for it. Hey, they're going to assail Trump no matter what he does. So you might as well just do what he well, wants. Well, you know to why? Because there's That's a reason. Because there's a reason to. <laughs> Hello, Patrick. Hold on. What's what's happening, Patrick? Um. I'm getting ready to go to the hospital tomorrow and then surgery on uh, no, Thursday. No, no. Tell me no. Yeah, kidney stone surgery. So <sighs> you, uh, you, you, you. Well, to begin with, you have a problem with kidney stones. Is it because yeah. of your condition, or would it be? Would you have them anyway? It it appears that I'm just prone to that. You just grow them yeah. like most people grow vegetable gardens, right? Yeah. yeah. So. You don't feel the pain though, do you? Then how do you know you have them? Uh, every six months, I go to the urologist for a uh, oh. ultrasound. So, so uh, if you if you went a little more often, would they possibly discover it, and it'd be small enough that where they could use the uh, the, the, the whatever it is that they do ultrasonic to to blow the things up and let you piss they, them out? They still do that. The problem is, I use a catheter, yeah. so there's no way that those stone would pass through. The catheter, because the catheter... Oh, and that's why they have to go in and get them. Well, not not only that, but what the part that gets into the bladder only has two small holes that allow the um, the urine to uh, pass. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So it, it wouldn't matter if they found them smaller or not. I would still have to go in for surgery. I see. Now, have you had the surgery before? Yeah, it, I, it, I've it, had it yeah. four or five times in the last 14 years. Is so. it laparoscopic? Yeah, it, yeah, they go into a urethra. Yeah, um, there's no cutting or anything, but they I, they yeah. put they put you out for this, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. One hopes. <laughs> How long will you be in for? Well, I was supposed to just go in Thursday morning and come back in the afternoon, um, but I've got a an infection, uh, urinary tract infection. Go figure. That mm. they put me on some uh, antibiotic yesterday mm -hmm. and uh i can't handle them i get dizzy yeah and, um and i have to do my transferring from my wheelchair to the shower you know and all and i don't feel comfortable doing that so um i'm going in tomorrow morning so i'm gonna have 24 hours of 
IV antibiotics. Oh, yeah. really? Mm. Yeah, and then surgery, and then I make them go home Thursday afternoon, or it may be a day or two or still in the hospital. Well, the minute you get, get minute you get home, uh, you know, that night, call us because we want to know you're okay. But also, you, you, we can go to your Facebook page, and I'm sure you'll be posting. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I figure, you know, if I feel good enough, I would call in, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a good thing if you got dizzy that you're sitting down. Just in case people want to know how to get a hold of you on Facebook, it's Patrick Blazik, right? Yep. Yep. So. Or if they want to wish him well, you'll get a lot of those, and then that that's a pain in the ass, but, you know. <laughs> oh, well. Wow. So, you know, other than that, everything else is groovy, so. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, that, that that that's not groovy, though, you know. Well, yeah. it's not the end of the world either. So. Well, you're you you. This is how many times have you had this before? I think about five times. Okay, so this is like uh, going in and getting your teeth cleaned. Pretty much. Yeah, they put you out. I hope and yep. give you good drugs. They put you out for the surgery and that's it. Well, you know, but I mean, the stuff they use at Propofol. I was mentioning this the other day. There is one brief second before you go under that you feel wonderful. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, we're through. You know, it's like they slight, they edited out 30 minutes out of your life or whatever, <laughs> you know. Well, that's what happened, yeah. Yeah. For all you know, they could put something in you like the guy to leave his, put his wristwatch in there and say, guess what he's got inside? Next time we take an x-ray, let's look at it, you know. <laughs> Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Well, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm a big baby. Okay, I have to admit that I'm a big baby, and I, 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 the kind of stuff you've had to go through, and to keep your demeanor is just amazing to me. You're like a hero to me, because uh, you know, I mean, of course, if I were in the same exact position as you, I suppose at some point you have to say, well, you know, I can either go on with my life or I can let this get to me. Well, yeah, that, that right, is, right, yeah. Like I'm sitting here with this with this knee and going, oh, well, this has ruined my quality of life. But I can still walk to the grocery store, which is something you can't do, you know. No, but I can drive there. You can drive there. Well, I used to just drive there when I had a car, but you know, it's because I was lazy, not because I had to, you know. Uh, but um, you know, I just don't know. Like I'm beginning to understand uh, my uh, my wife a little better, you know, because she lives with pain all the time with her back and and the various things they've had to do to her back and the various little things they've done to it and whatever and she's in constant pain and i never understood that but since this knee thing although it's a little better today i know what that constant pain thing is all about and uh you know i've never had to live with it but i was thinking about starting to make a list like on facebook of all the things that are wrong with me now <laughs> You know, it's not a big long list compared to some people. But today I was talking, it'll be on, I guess, the portion of the interview that I did with Bubs next week, because I do two of them at a time. I talk, He mentioned to me, he said, do you realize now, as you've gotten older, why old people are grouchy? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Abs y y you do, right, John? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm an old guy. I, I heard your everybody's uh, uh, how old everyone is, and I'm actually probably the second oldest here. The second oldest at, beside yeah, me. Yeah, at, at almost 67. At almost 67. Yeah. Yeah. Got a birthday coming up. Wow. <laughs> Gee, we do not appeal to young people, do we, on the show? Well, Brian, Brian is what? How old are you, Brian, again? 35. 35? He's a lot younger. He's, he's, I thought you were like 23. You look <laughs> really young. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, other than some aches and pains and the fact that I got cancer, I don't, I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel any older than I was when I was twenty. Use the term that I heard Little Richard use once as an excuse for why he didn't show up for an interview. Oh, I got the cancer. I got a touch of the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, but uh, anyway, so, uh, you know, it, 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 it's just that I, I find that maybe I should just start doing a show for old people. I mean, because we do talk about health a lot, you know. Smart, 
You've been doing a show for old people. I mean, I told uh, 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 Bob's, I said, every time we start talking, eventually it gets around to health, gets around to, you know, <laughs> an ache or a pain or something like that. And, and I don't necessarily bring it up. He does, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, I've got two scans coming up. You want <laughs> oh, good. What kind of scans? Uh, well, Thursday, a lung scan called a VQ, which is basically, I think if I remember correctly, because I had done years ago, you have, you breathe in some sort of mildly radioactive something. Oh, that's wonderful. And it lights up your lungs so they can see if there are any clots or other, whether the lung is working well. I, I gather mines are okay, but the... Is there the any sign that your lung isn't working well? Cardiopulmonary people want to just, you know, double check. But the, and then I have a cardio but, well, MRI on I've, Monday, but that one's pretty obvious. That's pretty basic. That's just from my my hospitalization back in I, November. I, I, yeah. uh, I they can't, just haven't looked. You know, I can't do an MRI. I can't do an MRI. Really? Were you ever a smoker, John? Well, what? Were you ever a smoker? No, never. Yeah. Uh, but I've had I had a I had a, a, a heart issues. Uh, well, years 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 and years ago, and then in November I had a heart failure that basically put a ton of fluid around my heart. So, you know, they drain that out. See, and folks, then, that's uh, what this I show is. That's sense. why I should just aim it at old people and leave it at that. Yeah. You know. There you go. <laughs> no, but I can't do an MRI because I have a gigantic fear of claustrophobia. What about the open MRIs? Well, I might have to have to do that. They may have to do an MRI on my leg, but can they just put my leg in there and not my whole body? I don't know. Well, they can maybe go up to the waist and then back down, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. They did that with, uh, I had a, uh, like, waist, waist down, feet, foot sort of thing, uh, CAT scan before I left because of my earlier problems with, with uh, leg stents and things like that. And they didn't go in even up to the, I mean... You know, my yeah. head was still out. And out well, I know and I've been, in, I've been, so. I've done CAT scans for like my, my innards, and they yeah. don't put my put me all the way in there. But I have this, I just have. I probably if I ever did an MRI, I wouldn't be that panicked by it. But just the thought of it being put in this tube, because I've always just had this dire f yeah. claustrophobia. I mean, it's it it's you go in pretty far, and it's noisy. I mean, this thing. It's it, the, it like the cat scan. You know, there's just something going yeah, around, going and around, 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 around. This yeah. is like it clunks. It goes clunkety, clunkety, clunkety. They saw a lot of time. Last time I had it done, they put uh, headphones on me with soothing music. You know, uh, which didn't soothe me. All it, it was soothing much. music with clunkety clunk in the background. Yeah, right. Well, what what happened is you can't. I looked in in the. If I ever have to have an MRI, I can do an open MRI. They're all mm -hmm. over town. You know, they're very common because people do have claustrophobia and and it's a panic for them to do an MRI. Well, I'm yeah. not thrilled. I mean, you know, I'm not. I don't. But I, you know, I, I I can sort of hold it long enough that it's not too bad. The big problem is just holding still. You know, they want you to breathe in, and then they, you know, you hold it and hold your breath and hold, and they finally say, okay, you know, exhale, and you're like, ah, you know, finally. Yeah, well, uh, why, the the why the fuck don't you get a machine that where I can breathe, okay? what it, Can't science invent the machine where I can breathe? Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. No idea. Yeah, we can invent like 20,000 different ways of killing people with the newest, spankiest technology from yeah. the military, via the Defense Department and the military, but we can't do that. Make a machine that where, where you can breathe as you normally would when you're having an MRI conducted on your ass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they say the pe reason people like an MRI over a CAT scan is because there's no radiation, it's mm. all magnetic resonance. Right. Uh, That's one of the things they had to check with me because the last time I was in. A couple of years ago, uh, getting some things some, with my legs clots and stuff dealt with, they put a filter in my uh, a, in my vena cava. I have one of those filters that they're always talking about on mm. TV. If this filter will break, call Salino and Barnes injury. I was like, no, no, my filter's <laughs> fine. Really, it's a good fine. So, but they, I'm, the I have, is, I, 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 I should get, you know, we, I don't know if it's magnetic or not, but they actually have to check with the people at the MRI, you know, they, well, can the, he, can he get scanned? Well, yeah, with, yeah, you're okay. With the way, <laughs> the way that people, people play with you as you get older, uh, yeah. you should have Salino and Barnes on speed dial, you know. Oh, half of the stuff that, that, that's advertised during the day on cable, on these cable channels for all these, uh, 
these malpractice attorneys and stuff are things that I, at some point or another, have or currently have. I was on Zarelto. Yeah, but you know, you would think that the reason why they did it, you know, usually advertisers advertise where they know they have the audience for their product. So you would assume that the reason they did that is because they realized that that audience uh, needs uh, uh, injury attorneys. But that isn't the reason, really. Uh, I, I think it's because uh, these people are just people who like to sue. If you watch Jerry Springer, you like to sue. Hmm. And so, you know, something goes wrong. and you, Those people you mean, don't sue. They just threaten to sue. Uh, those, most of the people you see on Springer, except for Springer himself, couldn't get an attorney to save their lives. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't afford one. Huh? Well, I, I mean, love the ads for San, Sanford Bernstein, though, Sandy Bernstein, who's, you know, who's the attorney for every... Oh, is that the guy? Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. guy. Yeah, but he he's, he's amazing. You know, he's, hey, he, he, he comes off. Right. As this as this wacko old guy, you know, and uh, but he gets results, I guess, because you know and they always he, talk he about is the million call dollar Saul. Yeah, you know. yeah they, they, there are a lot of those guys out there. Boy, your camera's moving around a lot, Brian. What are you trying to do? I'm repositioning it so oh, okay. it has a better view. Yes. And I, That's all better. <laughs> yeah, you know, but uh, uh, excuses, folks. If we're talking about health, is anybody listening to this? Well, we got a fairly <laughs> decent audience for it. I, you know, when you get a chance, I want to ask Rob a cigar question. No, oh, jeez. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> a cigar question. Yeah. Let's let's just get it out of the way before we've <laughs> lost everybody. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, the other day, I got a humidor. See, humidor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And I've been I seasoned it, and I'm trying to get it up to seventy percent uh, uh, moisture. Yeah. Uh, I can't get it past fifty-seven, yeah. uh, uh, and I'm using this thing. It's glycol something or other that's supposed to make it seventy. Yeah. Well, so the first question is, how 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 uh, how good is the humidor? Is it really sealed? I think so. It's supposed to be a good one. Uh, the the you know it's all Spanish cedar. Yeah, but is it? Do you really have good seals? Because that's that's really important. I'll tell you, I'm about to abandon humidors altogether and go with a coolador. They work way better. Wait, you what's buy, a coolador? You just buy a plastic solid cooler. You clean it out and you use that. I have had a coolador, a small one. With with my uh, those those little the bovida packs that you buy, yeah. And when I tell you how long I put a bovida pack in my humidor and it dries out in no time. I've had this bovida pack in this in this silly little plastic thing now. I had a car months. once and went bovida pack bovida pack. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, it's uh, I'm 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 done with humidors because you spend a lot of money on cigars and and a humidor is nothing more than a pretty looking thing and and they're a pain in the ass to keep up. Wow. Well, you know, maybe I could get double duty out of it. My friend was uh, cremated recently, and uh, we got to do something with him. And instead of the <laughs> coffee can that he's in, I toss him in the humidor. <laughs> there you go. So, how much did that humidor Just cost him. you, Phil? Uh, it was uh, I paid sixty bucks, but uh, the guy I bought it from says he paid eighty. So, so why is, a, why is he getting why is he humidor. getting rid of it? Uh, he's got six or eight of them, and. Uh, he wanted me to make him a pair of those uh, shooting uh, earplugs that I make, so uh, I traded him for the earplugs. Oh, uh, earplugs for when you go out shooting. Yeah. So you don't have to hear when you kill something. Well, it's so that you can keep your so hearing. You, so you when... don't hear the shrieks and cries of little animals. Oh. Well, if the paper cries that we shoot at, uh, mm -hmm. then uh, we got a problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're just a target shooter, right? Yeah, yeah, I kind of, I, I almost understand that. You it's know? fun. Target shooting is fun. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was, I was ranked the sharpshooter in the Navy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I brought uh, home the uh, target from Sunday. Here, I'll grab it and show you. Uh, but you see but, yeah, but you didn't bring the wood in behind it where most of the bullets went. <laughs> oh, I don't think they'd let them. Nah. Well, yeah, you just hang this on a thing. Let's see. So, okay. and people on t uh, watching us on Facebook can see this. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, and wait a minute, what is that guy? Who is that guy? It looks like some kind. It looks that like guy. he's a redneck or something. Uh, I got these targets. A friend of mine bought them in the 1970s, mm -hmm. and they were so, oh, semi-politically. Get, get, get the whole thing in the middle of the picture there. 
Uh, You're going to hide yourself for a second. Sorry. Hey, Jay, it looks just like you. Yeah. <laughs> it's got more hair. Yeah. I guess I'm the only one who can't see Phil, huh? No, wait a minute. I, for the oh, audience, I think I can blow it I up. There Alex, we go. So. I don't see Alex or Phil. Uh, you know, oh, I have to turn me back on. I yeah, guess. I don't see Alex, but there I see everyone else. There we go. Yeah, I couldn't see yeah, Alex. Look, <laughs> look at that, folks. You can see it now, full full whatever. Okay, let me let me go Notice back to the these chest. guys. It's only one hole. Huh? There's only Where's one the guy hole in his chest. Yeah, yeah, there's a big hole in the chest, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that hole. Why is he holding a crowbar or something? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that hole uh, went. It was a hundred rounds of forty-five ammo. All so, right. uh, eight, you know, the forty-five caliber. So you you uh, hit so, the middle uh, over and over repeatedly. What right? does a hundred rounds of forty-five caliber cost you? It runs about forty cents a round. So it's forty bucks. Two dollars. Wow. And how fast? How far away? How, how, what's your distance? Uh, I was twenty-one Very, feet. Twenty-one feet. Yeah. That's Seven usually where I, that's that's the distance I practice at. Okay. Yeah. But um, uh, you know I can move it further, and it really doesn't matter how far it is. I mean, it's the same principle uh, that you, know, you use, whether it's close or far. But uh, uh, you know, so uh, I also was doing uh, what they call failure drills, where you shoot twice in the chest and then once in the in the head. So you take three shots. Because yeah. you practice uh, shooting somebody that might have a vest on, and if they don't go down, then you hit them in the brain. So oh, that's a nice thought. I was wondering about that. You know, you have bulletproof vests, but they, a lot of people they have the vests on. The cops have, but they don't always have the the helmets or anything on that could probably protect their head. You know, so what if yeah. you just shoot them in the arm, shoot them in the head, shoot, shoot them in the feet, shoot them in the chest? Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, you, you go for the chest because chances are, under stress, that's the yeah. largest area. Yeah, but here's, yeah, the, here, area but here's, the, here's the question I have, I've always had, is why do we need to shoot anybody in the midsection? Why not shoot them in the leg? Because that doesn't Hard stop the threat. Hard to hit. If you hit somebody in the leg and they're shooting at you, uh, they're not going. They, they, there's a real good possibility they'll continue shooting at you. So what you want to do is you want to stop the threat, uh, the immediate threat, and the way to do that is. Uh, yeah, but you're supposed to use minimal force, from what I've been led to believe. No, you use the force necessary to uh, end the threat. Uh, you're not supposed to use the the, the force no. that is necessary to minimize the threat. In other words, well, somebody shooting at you, the only way to minimize the threat is to kill them. Well, it it it, 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 it doesn't. Uh, you know, if some if somebody's coming at you with uh, bare fists, then you're not necessarily going to shoot them. Uh, you know, you might use some other uh, level of force, but uh, if somebody's coming at you with deadly force, you well, answer. Well, you got all those things in your belt. You got handcuffs. You got mace. Uh, you've got a taser. Uh, yeah. You've got a gun. How do you um, decide immediately in the spur of the moment which one to use? Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> let's see. Is this a taser thing he's doing to me? And you know. Yeah. Well, ta taser beats stick. Uh, you know. <laughs> ta taser to me beats. Uh, taser beats rock also, <laughs> but it doesn't beat scissors. Hmm. Gun beats pretty much everything else. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's true. Wow. But, uh, so, uh, okay, so Rob, you're going to uh, a cooler rather than a humidor. And yeah. how do you know if the humidor is sealing well? Well, I mean, you can tell by what the way, you, way it opens and closes. You get that feeling like, yeah, actually, if it's a top one down and you close it, you really yeah. have to press on it for to get the air out of it. You know what I mean? When it closes. No, this thing closes like, uh, like a Cadillac. It's just... Uh, uh, it closes really nicely. And Does it feel like you know it's sealing when it closes, or you know because if if well, I'm if not sure, you know, I don't tight, then it should yeah, be it, it does. fairly it hard does. to close. Uh, well, it's not hard to close, but it's heavy. Uh, well, okay, that as long as it feels like you know, you know, it's not just going down and um, yeah. you know yeah. just like a lid. It should and feel it's like really it's sealed. Nice. Brass, uh, you know, things that control the lid. And, the you know, brass is all crap. I mean, that's all for show. Yeah. It's all for show. That, the humidors are for show, and I'm done with it because I, I've been screwing. You know, you spend a lot of money on cigars, and then you 
you, you put oh, them in yeah. the I, I bought a I bought a uh, humidifier thing. Uh, that was 37 bucks. Uh, 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 you know, just to tell you what the humidity and the temperature, the hygrometer. Right. And then it, it had this thing in it that you wet with mm -hmm. uh, distilled water, and uh, it was supposed to, you know, uh, keep it 70%. Yeah, that that's not that's not the 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 best method to humidify because the best the best method is going to glycol. not only no the best method is something that will also remove humidity from the air and that's what the bovida packs do uh -huh. and there are also like what they call heartfelt beads they do the same thing if yeah, the humidity I, is seventy five percent it removes it down well, to seventy so no, this this is uh, Icar uh, crystal clear humidifier. Zycar. Zycar. Yeah, Zycar, yeah. yeah. No, I, I wouldn't use that. I would use either beads or I would use the, the Boveda packs. Okay, he wanted to sell me for $100. Okay, how much longer is this going to go on? How much longer is this going to go on? You know, you asked a question. We should have gotten the quick answer and been on to slamming Trump again. But now, you know, I'm getting boveda <laughs> You know, uh, both of them. No, no, but, 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 but the, the uh, how many uh, there? How many of uh, the other people on this panel are into this topic? Yeah. No, it's now. I didn't mind him asking the question, okay. and I didn't mind Rob answering it. It was Phil's pursual of the subject matter oh. that uh, that has brought us to a back into the ditch. Have a cigar. <laughs> can i be honest about something and i don't wish to uh -oh. insult rob and i don't wish to insult phil well yeah. i don't i mean to insult phil but i don't mean to insult <laughs> rob but cigars are disgusting uh, no. it's it's our way of being antisocial. no but rob isn't an antisocial person rob is a very nice sweet decent person right rob Oh, ask my wife that question. We all have a degree of antisocial attributes, Alex. You can't deny that. It doesn't matter to what extent. I'm, I'm not a free social internet. person. With me, it's tech. With but a, them, a cigar, cigar is like saying fuck you cars. to the rest of the world, you know? Uh, you're right. That's exactly what it is. And I enjoy getting on my porch and sitting there for an hour and a half, maybe two hours, and uh, smoking a cigar, not worrying about anything going on, and that's what I, you know, why I enjoy it so much. Puffing on a giant, very a giant social. Cohiba, There's, and not, well, not to mention most people who smoke cigars, and mm -hmm. from what I, I've joined cigar groups, mm -hmm. are are the friendliest. Go into a cigar shop. Yeah, there's one two, there two, the two, two a, a block and a half from me. There's a place called Cigar Loft, and uh, I stop there. I buy a cigar. One of my favorite actors, Boris Cigar Loft. I'm saying, uh, Nothing. You know, go, just go ahead. Forget yeah. it. Forget it. I, I got it. So uh, anyway, you buy a cigar, you sit down. There's other guys watching TV or talking, and uh, it's it's very social. Yep. And uh, even though the guy doesn't have a liquor license, he says if you want to bring a bottle of port or you know a, a thing of wine, uh, it's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is that legal? BYOB then? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he says as long as uh, you know. He says as long as know. he's not supplying it. Yeah, All right, that's fun. I like the smell so much, and even with cigarette, ninety percent of the time I find cigarettes off-putting. But you know, oh yeah, if, when you first like when they when someone first lights it up, like the first ten second or know, thirty seconds of it, it actually smells pretty nice to me. Well, ex-cigarette smokers that, are the worst. I, I, I hate the smell of cigarettes, but I don't like the smell of marijuana either. Oh, no, so, I don't either. Oh, I love, the, sm I I love the smell of marijuana. Oh, it smells like that. burning oregano. No, it, it smells, it it, it, like. it, it, they, call it, they yeah. call it skunk weed because it kind of smells a little like skunk, but not as offensive. Yeah, no. well, <laughs> the, the apartment complex just fertilized with manure, and uh, I tell you, that is offensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, whatever happened to pipe smokers, though? My dad was a pipe smoker, and yeah, yeah. and that was always sort of you know that was fragrant and wasn't particularly didn't particularly smell like, yeah, like uh, tobacco. Pipe, pipe tobacco, tobacco was tobacco. always more fragrant than any of the other tobaccos. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of pipes, but you know what? I I haven't smoked one in years, and mm -hmm. I have good ones. Too. I, do you know anybody know anybody who smokes a pipe anymore? Isn't that so? Thirties and forties, you know. Aside from my grandfather, who would occasionally imbibe in one. No, you know, I, he's been I, dead for one. 
Uh, yeah, I just uh, a pipe never made much sense to me. Cig- well, look, they, none of that smoking makes any sense to me. Yeah. And I used to smoke like a chimney. You remember me, John? Oh yeah. Did I smoke or did I smoke? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 tobacco too. <laughs> I think yeah. it's a radio thing because you know, <laughs> when you're sitting there and you're and you're and you're doing a show, well, you have I, the cigarette. Oh, I go burning. through a pack in a four-hour show. Yeah. Yeah. What, how much? A pack. Wow, in four hours. Well, that's when packs of cigarettes are really cheap, like you know, fifty cents a pack. And then I heard it's going to be fourteen bucks in New York now. Pretty really? close, yeah, something like that. There's that's what happens when you legislate morality. It doesn't work. You used to smoke right in the yeah. studio, Alex. Y- yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, we were allowed to. Yeah. You know, I, I those days. Big ashtray. It used to fill up during the whole show. Damn. I remember when you could smoke in class when I was in college uh, in New oh, York. Oh, I remember when you could smoke at the museum. Yeah. You know, you could smoke anywhere. Plain. Yeah. Really, one of the reasons why I quit was out of self-defense. I didn't want to have to suddenly start having nicotine fits because I was somewhere where I wasn't allowed to smoke. And as the years were going on, they were starting to say, oh, you can't smoke here and you can't smoke there. And so I just one day I just quit and I stopped. And that was... Um, Back in the 1980, wait a minute, what was it? 1982, I think it was, that I quit smoking. The year I was born. Huh? The year I was born. Really? What? No, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. Was, was, was it 82? No, wait a minute, Where, when was it? No, no, it was earlier than that. Uh, yeah, no, it, it was, I because li- I left for California in 80. Okay. Yeah, so it was like 82 when I quit, so that's how many years now? That's, yeah. Yeah. 35, 30. You, you know what happened years, tonight? Tonight I I was doing my, uh, there's this guy, you know, I, I put stuff up on uh, Facebook uh, that doesn't have much to do with anything political because I've sworn off of that, as you know. Yeah. But this, uh, I wrote, um, I put a picture up of Bub saying, you know, Bubbles was going to be on the show tonight. And this guy writes and go, oh, let's see here. Where was it? Uh, uh, I can't remember where I saw it, but the person wrote and said, "Where's Joe Rogelski?" Now, I, now, <laughs> oh, you, Mendocino. You people don't know who I'm talking about, do you, Phil? You do. Yeah, yeah. I matter do. of fact, uh, I got a Joe Rogelski story. You probably uh, might remember. Well, Joe Rogelski was my news guy when I was in San. First went to San Francisco at the KML and then at uh, the Quake. But when I left the Quake. Uh, he still had a contract and he couldn't come with me to go to Live 105. So that's when we kind of broke up the act uh, between the two of us. And um, this guy writes, well, what happened to Joe Rogelski? And then I thought about it. Joe Rogelski was 40 years ago. (laughs) What do you mean, where's Joe Rogelski? He's lucky he isn't dead. (laughs) You know, 40 years. Yeah, well, he's he's up in Mendocino at. Uh, at I know. Doing I Poopers. talked to him recently. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen him since the days he used to hang out at Sam's in Tiburon. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and uh, but uh, what he, happened? This, was, he went to that station up in Mendocino. Yeah. Uh, later on, after we were through, and after he left that radio station stuff, he finally, maybe a couple many years later, went to that station up there. He's been there twenty five years. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um uh, one one time uh the you Susan me I had a Susan date was my and, uh, one of my ex-wives. Yeah, and Joe Rigelski, we went to this comedy thing uh up on uh, Fillmore Street. Mm-hmm. It was it was in, it was in the late afternoon. Uh and uh so we're sitting there, we're watching the comedy and the comedy and, thing on Fillmore Street. Yeah, it was on Fillmore. It was in like this coffee house. And uh, are you talking about the Holy City Zoo? No, no, no. no are you talking Zoo. about uh, the one in, in Haight Ashbury? No, I, I, no. It was on Fillmore, like in Pacific Heights. Boy, I don't remember a comedy club there. Well, it might have been just a, a, a one-off thing, but um, so I had this date with me, and my foolish uh, ex. Woman. Uh, who I was sort of broken up with, uh, had a girlfriend of hers call and say, Phil's there with another woman. So anyway, she came storming into this place, uh, ready to confront. And I said, oh, she, uh, I introduced it to everybody. And I said, by the way, 
uh, this is Joe Rogelski's date. <laughs> and Joe, you know, was, was stood in line and, and did what he had to do. And uh, my ex, uh, who you was... coward. <laughs> you fucking coward. To begin with, you broke up with this woman, right? Yeah. So what right did she have barging in and even confronting you being out with somebody else? You should have said, this is the woman I'm with now. Nah, I'm, I'm a coward. And she, and she, you know, uh, you know, played along. And uh, yeah, I said, no, no it's Joe's but date. No, that was wrong of you for the woman yeah. that you were with because you were denying her existence. Well, I slept with her that night. Well, that, <laughs> well that, but, that, uh, that's just stupid on her part. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, she wasn't the sharpest tack in the box. But, uh, well, of course, was, that's why paint. you went. That's why you went out with her. <laughs> that's right. And she kept saying, "Oh, Joe, oh, Joe." And I, yeah. <laughs> I would have fixed them up. They, you know, they look cute together. But uh, yeah. uh, I, I remember like Phil's ex-wife had a severe case of twaddleitis. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know what it is that uh, thing where uh, you know one minute they're nice and the next minute they're uh, they're whacked no, but, out. But, to begin with, I would have told this woman, hey, you know, you have your nerve coming in here. We broke up, okay? Yeah. I'm now dating other people. I have moved on. You should do the same with your life. Instead, Wait. you you let her believe in this ruse. It was good. No, <laughs> it was terrible of you, Phil. Alex, I have a question. What? Who's the worst, who's the worst party, though? Phil's ex-wife for storming in or the nib nosy cunt liquor of a of a friend that she had that was uh snooping and spying and yeah. buying junior detectives. oh the the, the 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 person who was spying and snooping yeah, yeah I think absolutely she's the worst of the two. boy you don't mince your words do you no not at all <laughs> you don't either alex i mean that's... well that's true it's not radio <laughs> it's true but i use the word cunt lovingly uh, uh i don't care i i i when, when i hate on something or someone I objectify them to the lowest common denominator. They are no longer human to me. You know, I wish I could find it. Uh, the guy who uh, who started uh, Live Aid and uh, oh, Bob what's Geldof? his uh, Bob Geldof was on my show, and I asked him the question about. I always hear British people, guys, referring to each other as cunts, and he said, "Yeah, that's just a term. We love using that term. I, we will call our mates," as he put them. A cunt, you know, and I went. That's wonderful. So after it was all over, I had to make a promo, which was uh, Alex Bennett. Uh, this is Bob Geldof, and I just want to say, Alex, you're a real cunt, <laughs> and I have it somewhere. It's got to be somewhere. But uh, uh, the old joke can't understand normal thinking. Or as a teacher of mine, when I was in the uh, uh, going for my CDL license, he uh, said that to a wait to a waitress when he was uh, when he was ordering his food. He said, "I would like a." Uh, I'd like a sandwich toasted, C U N T, and then the, she lets it sink she in for a while. Tuesday. Then, it, then he lets it sink in for a while, and the waitress gives him a dirty look. Says, "You use racist, you use sexist, best pig." He goes, "No, what? What's what's the confusion here? I oh, mean, what? cut up no tomato." Uh, yeah, but the thing is, <laughs> the, the, th the thing we'll is, see you next that, Tuesday. That in Britain, <laughs> it's not considered sexist because guys usually do not call women cunts; they call each other cunts. So, what do the British call a cigarette? A fag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, I wonder what they call their women then. Well, uh, well, they're politically incorrect, I guess. That's why here in America we birds, call gay right? people call cigarettes. Birds? What? Don't birds. They call women birds. Yeah, women are yeah. birds. Yeah, I mean these. I think these are terms that are, have passed in usage. Guys yeah. are mugs. Yeah, it's I had funny, a friend. Birds, because, yeah, I've, he used to know, say I was a mug. Your friends are your mates. Right. You know. There's twaddleitis, which is what Phil's ex-wife obviously had. And then there's what happens when tw twaddleitis Not his ex -wife. It was his, it, like it, a cancer it, that lingers and spreads. It's what transforms them into a cuntly, want leave all the lip bitch. <laughs> what is, is with you, Brian? See, wheelie, diva, la bird. Gee, Brian, you should get your own show on talk radio for crying out loud. You have. You would you be a sensation. <laughs> just, just put you on and let you just go with that. Just. Be hostile for two I'm hours. Sure a, I'm sure I'd get a ton of uh, hate mail. Of course, of course, that's the best kind of mail to get. <laughs> I'd read them on the air too. People, people say to me, "There are people topics. who write you hate mail. Don't you feel bad when they hate you?" I say, "No, I'm doing a radio show. I want them to hate me or love me. I don't want them to just go. Hey, he's okay." 
waste their passion you know? one way or another. Yeah, you don't want that. Right. Brian's show should be, can you top this? So he'll have some statement, and then somebody else calls. Everybody else will try and top it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, um, the, the first 100 days have just passed, you know. <laughs> well, I thought it was Saturday. Was it Saturday? Yeah. yeah. Well, today was the day that uh, Spicer got out there and gave his little, uh, little speech mm -hmm. about, here are the things we've accomplished in 100 days. Well... Nothing was really accomplished. He got a Supreme Court justice. Uh, the, we now have a nuclear option. Nuclear. Uh, yeah, <laughs> nuclear. And, yeah, but he didn't uh, accomplish the nuclear option. Well, you know, he ran out of the Supreme did it for Court him. justice. How's that? How and how did he? What, explain that, Rob. You're saying that he didn't. No, he that was done. In, that was done in Congress because they, you know, they wanted uh, Gorsuch. So. Right. They they changed the rules. Well, that well, Trump could have uh, appointed uh, uh, who was that guy that uh, Obama wanted, and they wouldn't have had to do Patrick the nuclear. Yeah. Yeah, nuclear. Yeah, that really, really, yes, That's Patrick. Direction. Patrick has his hand up. Uh, the rule was already there. Uh, Harry Reid and the gang are the one who uh, put that nuclear option on the table uh, a couple years ago, and mm. they passed it. And that was, I think I mentioned something about that last week or the week before that this is one of those things that it comes back and bites you in the ass. Yeah, so absolutely. the Democrats did it. Now it bit them in the ass by the Republican. He's but right. the Republicans got to remember if that is still there when they no longer have power, it's going to bite them in the ass. And until it gets thrown out of, you know, that, that rule gets. Uh, it ain't going to get – that'll never happen. It's going to be back and – right. It's going to be back and forth. So right now the Democrats are taking it up the ass. God, we really, don't have, we, we really don't have a government anymore, either in our elections or anything else, where the person who gets the most votes by however a small margin it wins. You know, I mean, in other words, Gorsuch should have been turned down, but because of the nuclear option, it only took so many to do it. You know what I'm saying? Majority rules. Yeah, yeah and, and I think they're, I think they're looking to see which justices they can kill off so they can get a few more through before they lose Congress. I'm going <laughs> to bet you something. That, uh, yeah. Let's say, what's her name? Finally decides Bader to Ginsburg. quit. Bader Ginsburg, because she, she doesn't want to die being a Supreme Court justice. She'd rather. She probably would have, if you know, if Hillary had gotten elected, she would have quit already. I think she probably died about six months ago, well, and they're uh, just propping her up. Like, uh, what was that? My, well, uh, my I, you weekend know, with Bernie. I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. not, I'm not uh, uh, saying things about people who get older, but I think because I'm in that crowd. But I do think that she's a little too old to be making these decisions now. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. and I think she probably believes that too. But she's hanging on by her finger tendrils. Because she can't, uh, she doesn't want to leave because of what it will, will, what it will rot. Well, I'm betting that if this happened, there, the people will not pass as lightly into the night on the next one. They're going to fight it like crazy, right? You can't. If and, the nuclear option is, well, is there, how can you fight it? Well, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, to be fair, I honestly believe Trump might get somebody who more is in the middle than uh, but, but, do you don't think so, Scott? Uh, no, you're crazy. Why am I crazy? Still the hun. Because he's crazy. That's why. <laughs> well, that's why and I'm thinking he would do that is because he is right crazy. Ways. You know. You got Pence. You got, um, and you got in the legislature. You got Paul Ryan. You've got yeah. fucking Mitch McConnell, the turtle. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's going to be nothing left of this country. I'll tell you that right now. You know. Oh yeah, I know, Phil. We're we're all just doomsayers here, but oh uh, yeah, and it's terrible. I guess the stock market, uh, the Nasdaq's at six thousand for the stock first. Stock market moment. doesn't mean shit to a tree. Yeah, it really well, does. No, it doesn't. It it doesn't. It's huh? an indication. It's of, not an indication. Uh, nothing. Uh, and, it's and an in, it's an, it, it's a it signifies nothing. Explain well, it, Rob. You have your four. How the wind K. blows. It's yeah, all no. feeling. It's I understand. Feeling. Well, the whole thing's feeling. But if you have your 401k and it's going up in value and you're feeling a little wealthier, you're going to go out. You're going to buy carpet. You're going to go out. You're how gonna... about how about if your if your stock is going up, but so is the price on everything? 
Well, uh, I, the prices on everything aren't rising. Well, they are rising and <laughs> continually. Look, look, Rents look, in look, major cigarettes. cities now are at an astronomical, almost yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, hideous yeah. price. Well, uh, yeah, rents are going up, but... Uh, yeah, all I'm saying is you you may have more money in stock. It may be going on the rise, but that don't mean shit to a tree if everything else is going up, too, so it's all averaging out. It's what people feel. You know, they feel like they have more money. Whether whether they actually do or not is immaterial. Uh, it's it's the it's the feeling of, of wealth oh, uh, or but, but, wealth. But, but I'm saying that's all... That's all Smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors. It, yeah. yeah, I Good understand. But that's what makes the economy run. Yeah, until tomorrow when people don't feel that way and it's not built on anything. Tomorrow built somebody wakes up with a hangover yeah. and that's the end of it. Yeah, that's yeah. You're right. Uh, Brian's right. 2008. I mean, uh, it was like they turned the faucet off. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's you know, all built on lies and and feelings and and that you know the stock market is the last thing that you should be concerned with. And the, and the stock market isn't an indication of how well the country is so far as its financial health. I, I mention it because it just happened to be a milestone that the NASDAQ crossed 6,000. And, right. and it will be and, a milestone Phil, when it hits 7,000. Yeah, and you know. Phil, think about it. Why? Because corporations think that they're going to cut the taxes, but they haven't been able to get anything past anyone. So you know, the, the minute that they realize that that isn't going to happen, you'll see it tank. It, there's a reason why Trump is incapable of getting anything done, and that's because he's never played this game before, and yeah. he doesn't know how to play it. And he has people around him. You know, you know who his biggest uh, advisor is now, basically. Here. Ivanka, Kushner and Ivanka. Yeah, yeah. And these are two people who don't know shit to a tree when this comes. Two people to this. he trusts. You see, he ran his business with those people. And yes, but this running, isn't, but this, it, it, it doesn't work here. Here you need people who you can trust to have the right answers. Yes, Patrick. You need politicians. Right. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. yeah you, need, you need to throw them in the swamp. Well, yeah, but realistically, so, I mean, I, you know, I, I, wasn't for, I mean, obviously I didn't vote for either one because uh, I was looking for a different change too. Mm -hmm. um, but with once you're in Washington, you need people like, you know, Alex said you can trust. Well, I think trust is a weird word to use in Washington anyway, but uh, you need people in your pocket that you can count on to. Mm -hmm forward whether it's your agenda or somebody else um you know and, and that's where politicians come in people who have had their hand greased a little bit um so that you know the inner workings of washington i mean you know alex says it all the time with uh pre former president obama when he came in there he didn't know anything either yeah. you know yeah. and um it takes you a while to get acclimated but at least obama had some uh experience from Illinois, as little as that was, um, you know, Trump well, also, has a big learning curve. Also, could I add another thing about, uh, about, uh, about Trump that we haven't mentioned here, and that is, uh, the, versus Obama, is that Obama, when he took office, was a young man and had much better ability at grasping things fast, learning fast, and so on. Trump at his age isn't learning shit. In fact, he's so lazy, he almost refuses to learn. Well, yeah. He, we dropped uh, we dropped those bombs in Iraq, right? Yeah. That's what he went on television and said and they had to they had to they had to correct him. Seriously. But they, they wanted they, to drop though, bombs. It, it, yeah, that he didn't drop bombs in Iraq, yeah. Whoops, well, I, I meant you, I meant you, Afghanistan. You say Iran. Your your camera's off, Alex. Well, it is off. How did it go off? Yeah, it just switched off again. Yeah. Huh, well, I'll switch it's been it off back for a while, on. Mine. Well, just let me know when it's it back on, everybody. Nope. I still see the logo. Okay. Well, see, I I want Trump no. to to run the government with less people. You know, they say he hasn't filled all his positions. Maybe he doesn't want to because that's not the way he operates. He operates with less and gets things done. 
Uh, now he doesn't get anything I, done. He doesn't get anything done. Where, where, what, what, wait, 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 hold on. What La La Land are you living in Look, where he's getting circuit, stuff done? The getting Ninth stuff. Circuit, what? Uh, uh, these, the, the, the courts have, have tried to uh, uh, prohibit anything that he's tried to get done. But this uh, the thing on uh, uh, the sanctuary cities, for instance. Yep, that's uh, another and, one. Uh, no, but that's a temporary stay. And uh, a number of people are saying that that's going to get overturned and uh, they're going to be able to do it. Uh, and that was Ninth Circuit San Francisco that, uh, that got that temporary stay. And uh, so they're, they're fighting him. It wouldn't matter uh, if, if he wanted to deliver ice cream uh, to, on a hot day. Uh, Who's the head of the Ninth Circuit uh, Court? Uh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Well, he was on 60 Minutes last, I think, last Sunday. Yeah, I, and, I went shooting Sunday. And he's a conservative. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, And, and I, Trump hates him. Yeah. Well, because he keeps stopping all of Trump's uh, efforts. No, because he's reading the Constitution like you want him to, and he's coming up, he and the court, Ninth Circuit Court, are coming up with these decisions. They're, but, they're, you know, you, you on one hand, you say you want a court that doesn't yeah. legislate from the bench, and on the other hand, when they say they are using the Constitution, and that's what they're using— and that doesn't go Trump's way. You're going, oh, the Ninth Circuit Court, boy, they, you know, they legislate from the bench. They right. have always gone in and no, uh, they've always been the most constitutional of all the circuit courts in the country. No, uh, and that's what you always I, have said. I, you I, want, I you want, you said you want a court that reads, you know, that that, that makes its decisions based on the Constitution. Supreme Court, so, you know, are you, the Supreme Court. Oh, you don't want the district court. courts to be that way. District no, courts, no, no, no. you want, I want me... them to uh, to overturn the sanction. I want them to uh, to have the sanctuary cities, because uh, doesn't I, that go I, against? I, doesn't that go against? Uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? The the um, states' rights. Well, it doesn't may, it go against states' rights? Yeah, I guess it does. Okay, but, well, case made. I'm sorry. It, it was an interesting <clears throat> statistic. They said that there's about 12 million illegal aliens. Of the 12 million illegal aliens. 75% of the uh, people in jail or, and the crimes being committed are committed by illegal aliens. I, I believe that if they get a handle on Where this, it's going to Where the fuck did you time. get? What, 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 what percentage were done by? 75%. Uh, in other words, 75% of the people in prison are illegal aliens? Yes. Yeah, I don't the, know where you got that statistic right. from. I thought they shut Alex Jones up. Uh, uh, I, I got it from Melanie Morgan, who used oh, to be a... Oh, uh, oh, forget that. Forget that. You're listening to a talk show host. Why are you a fucking talk show host now? She's no longer a talk show host. It was just a, a, I'm a Facebook friend. <laughs> so, I didn't know what she's saying. She 75, does anybody here believe that 75% of the people in prison are illegal immigrants? I'll try to find that. Uh, you, you'll try Maybe to find California it, and you'll, are, you'll be there no, for the rest of the a, show looking for York. it. Brian? No. Brian has his hand up. Let's play devil's advocate here. You had said, and I'm surprised Phil didn't raise this uh, as a rebuttal when you asked if uh, if uh, states' rights would be uh, when 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 states' rights is uh, called in the question concerning the sanctuary cities uh, mm -hmm. issue, and uh, playing the devil's advocate here, uh, matters of national security. Yeah. Oh, so you can over override over states' rights when it's a matter of national security? I don't know if an illegal immigrant is hiding out in a sanctuary yeah. city who's... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know that it's a matter of national security because the crimes that are done are local. Well, you know, there, I often used uh, a, a, a corollary that uh, uh, what certain politicians do, and Trump is certainly guilty of this, is bell the cat. Claim they're going to bell the cat. There's a cat out. It's the old story. Right? The cat outside the uh, mount, uh, rather the mice, and the guy wants to be the king of the mice. So he tells them there's a cat outside the mouse hole, and that if they make him king of the mice, he'll bell the cat. And so they say, oh, okay, well, go bell the cat. We'll make you the king. So he goes out there, rattles the bell, leaves the bell out there because there's no cat. Comes back in, they make him king. That's exactly how Trump won the election. By I saying there was a bell, there was a cat outside the mouse hole when there really wasn't. Well, that's the way they all do it. No, that, just because that's the way they all do it, it uh, Obama didn't do it that way. Tell me when Obama used that. 
Phil, uh, so desirous of finding that 75% of the immigrants that he can't even uh, be part of the conversation. Well, I'm, Come I'm on, looking. when did Obama ever use that? What, uh, uh, that? I don't know. I didn't listen much to what Obama said. Uh, oh, that's your excuse. Okay. He also didn't even hear the problem. question that I, he doesn't even know what I asked uh, him. Yeah, you, you said, when did Obama use the cat out uh, with the bell yeah. uh, uh, theory? And I said, I don't, I don't know. I don't think know. he, uh, do you, if Rob, do you, do you remember him ever doing anything to scare us into, no. into voting for something? No. No. He was not a fear monger at all. Yeah, where uh, uh, Trump's entire presidency is promulgated on fear mongering. Oh. Yeah, well, uh, Obama tried to uh, uh, kiss and make nice with uh, with all of our enemies, including uh, Iran, and uh, you know that and Russia that, that, and Russia, right? Russia. Uh, too, I don't right? think he did well with Russia. No, he didn't do well. Well, as Trump is doing well with Russia, you, you know why? Because Trump is kissing their ass. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not so sure. Oh, okay, okay. Ah, oh, boy. It, yeah. Just all of his people are going to jail over it, presume. Lock him up. What about Flynn here? He's going to be in jail soon. He's going to roll on Trump. Woohoo! <laughs> all over, baby. You think he's going to roll over on Trump? Oh, he's a pussy, just like all the rest of them. Yeah. He's going to roll like a, like a, yeah. I don't know, a $2 whore on Saturday night. <laughs> well, it's though he accepted but money. Trump likes to grab pussies, so, I mean, he's already grabbed but, Flynn. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Flynn accepted money from Russia and Turkey, and uh, they're saying that he's going to have to pay it back. Uh, oh, the Turkish guy had accepted money from Russia, so maybe that came through. You know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Everyone's back. everyone's yeah, after, out for themselves. Yeah, and he and he took the money while he was uh, um, uh, he where when he was part of the campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, oh. They're saying that uh, the fact that Benghazi. that was exposed, yeah, they're saying the fact that that was exposed and that uh, he, uh, he got fired uh, bodes well for Trump because if it would have, if they didn't discover that, uh, or Susan Rice didn't bring it to you know fruition, uh, Trump would have been really Gates. embarrassed. He isn't embarrassed already. Apparently There's Gates. this much corruption and and mal malfeasance being uh, thrown in his direction. By people well, under, I mean, you got to remember, uh, Ronald Reagan never did anything particularly illegal, but more people in his administration were indicted what about than that? any other administration in history. Yeah. Well, his, um, uh, uh, Ronald Reagan's, uh, I think it was his attorney general, it, was it Edward Me Red Meese? It wasn't, no, uh, his, this guy's Maybe. wife got killed on an airplane. Uh, do you remember which guy that oh, yeah. was? Wait a minute. Uh, uh, wife, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, and he had some problems. It wasn't Meese. It was, uh, it was somebody like Meese. Uh, but, uh, and then his, uh, his wife mysteriously died in a midair collision on, on a, uh, on an airplane. They think that it was blown up, uh, to, uh, to keep her from testifying. You don't remember that? You mean Reagan had somebody yeah. killed? That was a Reagan thing? I don't think Reagan did, but I'm sure some of the people around him might have. Uh, but um, it, it wasn't me. Yeah. It was... The um, anti-Clinton forces uh, were all big on Vince Foster being, you know, in this air crash was planned. That's like, you know, I mean, it was... Yeah, like, yeah, just... By the way, airplane, speaking, speaking the way of, hair of, of harebrained uh, uh, theories, did you see where... Um, uh, Alex Jones is being sued by Joe. Jo, what is it? Jobani? Chibani? What's the yeah. yogurt? Oh, the yogurt. oh yeah, the uh, the yogurt people. Yeah, they're suing right. him for ten million dollars. Why? Huh. He he's claiming it. It's a strange. Let me look this up here so I can tell well, you. Well, no, straight I, I know state. some of this, Wait, Alex. Uh, I was looking at it before. I saw. I, I saw. Oh, Wait a minute. You know. You know the story, Chibani. Scott. No, no. I, I they said something on sixty Minutes about it when. Uh, Hey, they had a he he did an interview on 60 minutes the guy who owns Javon. Yeah. The, yeah. the 
Um, okay, and here it is. From. Here it is. That guy took a town up in upstate New York or something and employed everybody and 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 really turned the place around. He's, he's a pretty good guy, I understand. Well, yeah. Well, he, he also was he, he was also, only employing Muslims and he was only in all. No, his other well, no, things, no, so. no. But he is employing no, he Muslims because no, he's, he's, he's a Muslim himself, and he, he yeah. made it in this country, and he wants to give back to his people. But the fa fact but is, they're suing. Uh, Alex Jones for alleged def defamation. The, uh, uh, he uh, published what the company says are false and defamatory stories at issue in the suit, which was uh, filed Monday, is a video published on Jones Infowars website and social media accounts. Okay. Um, earlier this month, in which two Infowars staffers discuss the publicity that Chobani founder Hamadi, you know, I can't even pronounce his last name, received for hiring refugees at his plant in Twin Falls, Idaho, and the separate case of three refugee youth who pleaded guilty in the assault of a five-year girl in the same city. The youth who had no connection to the plant, the youths who had no connection to the plant, were reportedly ages 7 and 14, were involved in an impropriety touching a girl while filming the incident. In the video, Mr. Knight republishes the false statement that the Chobani plant brought crime and tuberculosis to the community. Uh, the assault was unrelated to Chobani, it said. The uh, video was promoted by Planet Prison TV Twitter account under the headline, Idaho Yogurt Maker Caught Importing Migrant Rapists. Oh. This, that sounds uh, a little, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> sounds a little inflammatory. The lawsuit yeah. alleges that Twitter account is controlled by Infowars and that the video was retweeted by Jones himself. So he's being sued now for, I think it's ten, something like $10 million by Chobani because the guy just didn't want to put up with it. You know, and of course, Alex Jones is claiming they're trying to shut him up. Well, no, they're trying to keep their business from being defamed. You don't have the right to defame somebody in the name of free speech. Yeah. He's lucky they could have sued him for $20 million if he had tweeted this or retweeted this stuff while he had a shirt off. Yeah, well, I... I <laughs> I, 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 you know, I you hope ever seen those images. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm gay. I, I, I suck dick, and I have standards. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of gay viewers out there who are going to take umbridge with that statement, <laughs> Brian. Well, they can take umbridge all they like. They like, like, they yeah. like uh, big fat guys with yeah, uh, man yeah uh, by all you, means they can go motorboating on that if i were gay I, I wouldn't even put uh alex jones on my wall okay you know Ugh. forget it um oh boy you are funny brian <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah no uh Alex Jones does not vet most of the material, he says. He takes two separate things and tries to forge them together into a conspiracy, you know, where none exists. And then shot. these people go on and they tweet this, and he tweets it. And before you know it, it, it some people believe it is truth. That, you know, so there's some people out there believing Chobani uh, migrant workers that they hire at their plant go around raping people. That, I, that's I the takeaway. The pizza gate shit. Huh? Went into the pizza parlor and, you know... Scared a bunch of people when he showed up armed. Well, you know, there are people unstable and well, that up. whole thing, that whole thing about the uh, uh, the pizza parlor being shot up, uh, is, uh, is 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 it it's, it sits at uh, at Alex Jones's door, you know. It was done for the money, I think. What, you know, what do you mean for the clicks? Oh yeah. yeah. No, That's right. No but question. How, about how do you respect somebody who does that? Listen, I you know we use uh, we use. Uh, uh, what's the name of the company? Uh, I know the company that we use to do this every night and to put the sound out there, but it's the uh, uh, the people Facebook. who... Huh? Facebook? No, 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 no. Soundboard. Huh? Was it Soundboard? No, 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 no. No, we no. don't use Soundboard. No, we use... Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me just... Uh, <laughs> let, let me let me go here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I have it listed here. Where are we? I can't. I, I can't see it. Why I can't remember these things. I'm terrible these days. Shoutcast. Mm. And Shoutcast has a list. If you go to Shoutcast of all the top talk shows that are running right now and how many people are watching, you know whose is the top, don't you? 
Alex Jones by maybe 30,000 listeners. Wow. Very sad. Yeah, very sad. And scary. Yes, absolutely. Uh, So, you know, there are people who are going to take away from anything that Alex Jones says that that's the truth. And it's, it's not. You know, but I heard it on the Internet. Yeah, I know. You heard it from Alex Jones, folks. He, every word coming out of his mouth needs to be vetted. You know, so, anyway. No one's held, nobody's held responsible for it, so. Well, what happens when you cut down on investigative journalism and the funding needed for such um, ventures? Well, our belief in freedom of speech is too sacrosanct. Because in other countries, for instance, England, if somebody says something libelous against you, you can sue them, and they can also be brought up on criminal charges. Why is it, sir? You say that, and, and it just it, something's lost on me. Because why is it sacrosanct if it even states explicitly in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the First Amendment? Well, yeah, but that's that you can't why, yell fire in a crowded theater. Well, that's why we make it sacrosanct. And and according to the Constitution, you can yell fire in a crowded theater. Uh, you, you know, but uh, you have to pay for it. <laughs> but you have to pay. You, you may have to pay for it, and people suing you for the damage. You know. Uh, but uh, but we take freedom of speech like it's something that so Alex Jones is doing what he's doing under the mantle of freedom of speech and it's not freedom of speech at all he's using the freedom to defame and I'm to wondering destroy. if and to destroy and I, there's something terribly wrong about that yeah. but who's worse you know Alex Jones or the people who pay attention to him well you know you can't fault the people who are paying attention to him because. They, their, their Facebook. It's the kind of stuff you see on Facebook in a picture with a funny, quippy quote on it, and people yeah. just believe that crap. So, you ha- you have to cut it at the source. That's like blaming the guy who buys the the drugs from the dealer. You got to get it at the dealer and above. You, you know, you you're gonna blame the the guy who's buying it. Yeah. You know, it's you got to get it from the source, and we can't seem to find a way to protect ourselves from that. Because in the old days, you wouldn't let it, if you owned a TV station or a group, you would never let a guy like that on the air because it would affect your license, what you own. Today, you don't have that. You can just go out there and post anything. Let me propose a question to you. I probably should have proposed this earlier because it, it is something that's definitely up for discussion. I look at a country like China where you don't have the freedom of speech we have here. Uh they don't have to deal with this kind of that kind of misinformation. And you know, I asked somebody in China, how do you like the fact that, you know, the Communist Party rules with an iron thumb and, you know, you just have to do what they want to have done. And she said to me, as long as I'm making a good living, I get a good place to live, eh, let them have their own fun playing their little game. Can I can I ask you something? Well, well, let me let me finish what I'm, what I'm saying. Is this idea that democracy is everything? Maybe something that we're leading ourselves to believe that isn't true and that causes more problems. If we had maybe a, a system whereby people ruled with a little more of an iron fist, but you could go ahead and earn your living and raise your family and uh, freedom of speech went out the window, but there was food in your stomach and everything, uh, which, would that be preferable? Or, or is it so important that you have these freedoms and do you use them every day that they become a very important thing to you? I question that. Can I give you an example of when communism breaks down? No, we know why it breaks down. It, uh, no, no, when? It, it, uh, it when? It's a recent example. L- look at, look at, uh, look at uh, the Soviet Venezuela. Union. No, look at Venezuela. Well, Venezuela is another good example of that as well. However, China has remained a staunchly communist country for years and is very successful. Brian? I can give you a more direct uh, answer to your, uh, to your question. You get, what uh, I'm, you get what I'm saying, what I'm asking. Comfort, sacrificing freedom for comfort, Mm -hmm. it's like sacrificing uh, liberty for security. You're going to, it's not that you don't deserve either, as Ben Franklin was saying, it's that you normally won't get either in the end game. Eventually, you'll lose both. Okay, but uh, if if we knew that tomorrow, 
uh, everybody was going to get a good education. Everybody was going to have food. Everybody was going to have shelter. Everybody was going to live a fairly good life, okay, and be able to go out with their joyous pursuits. But all they'd have to give up is freedom. But they can't speak ill of Trump, his administration, or anybody in the or anybody in the uh, federal, well, state, or it, local it, government. He would have to deliver; otherwise, he would be overthrown by the people. Well, let me yeah. ask you this: You have to understand. Let me just say this. Let me say this, and then uh, Rob is next. But when you have a dictator, a dictator has certain obligations. One of his obligations is to do right by his public, because if he doesn't do right by them, they'll overthrow him. Rob. Why don't we add to freedom of speech a, a codicil that 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 people can challenge it and 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 you can be held accountable for what it is. Yes, you have the freedom to say it. But now once you've put it out there in the ether, we can go back and say and, and hold people accountable as opposed to just. I can say whatever I want, and I and I'm doing it under the guy. I'm, I'm going back to the pizza thing, under the guise of clicks and making a lot of money. Okay, you want to play that game? Go ahead, but we could come after you if we find that your speech isn't accurate. If it caused somebody harm, why can't we? Why is it just freedom of speech? And oh, not I, I I think the problem here, Rob, is that Giovanni is going to have to spend a lot of money. To sue Alex Jones, and He's they shouldn't, and they should, yeah, but they shouldn't have to spend a penny. Right. They should be able to sue and have the government back them up on the suit because there seems to be a merit to the uh, claims of 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 you know, of being. What, what, what court case ruled that you can yell fire in a crowded theater though? No, I'm saying there's never been a court case that has said you can't. You know. I. Th I thought that was no, outlined no, in the Bill I don't, of Rights. I don't know. It's not in the Bill of Rights at all. No, yelling fire. Do you know of one, Patrick? No. I, I, and I don't know that the Supreme Court ever ruled on it. I, I, you know, they say, oh, you, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. I'm going, but, you know, in the name of freedom of speech, you should be able to. It's just that you should have to live with the consequences of your action. But the, what are the consequences? And, and, high, and you have to set those stakes high. That's what I mean. You have to – in the old days, what protected it was the fact that you couldn't get a loud enough voice unless it was a newspaper that could be sued or unless it was a TV or a radio station that could be sued and possibly lose their license. Today with the internet, there's no accountability. So the only way to hold people accountable mm -hmm. is to hold the individual accountable. For not, the individual is not going to be accountable because he was abused as a child. You know, and uh, uh, they, they, so they make an excuse. Oh, but he shouldn't be punished because he was abused. You know, that, that's what they're going to say. What? You know, when when they when a guy yells out fire in a crowded theater. Oh, and it's about, suppose there is a fire in a crowded theater. Can you then yell fire in a crowded theater? Oh, yeah. I mean, that would be reasonable. And wouldn't the reaction it fire. by yelling fire in a crowded theater be the same as if there wasn't a fire in a crowded theater? No. It wouldn't wouldn't be as many people get trampled if there really was a fire than if there wasn't a fire? Well, the intention was there for you to, you know, let people be made aware of the fact that if you didn't move out of the theater that you would uh, get burned to death. Right. Now, as far as evacuation procedures are concerned, that's, you know, up to, uh, that's really up to management. But, I mean, yeah, we'll... so they'll make an announcement. If there's a fire, please be sure to quietly go to the exits. And people will certainly do that. Well, that's the ideal. Is it going, going is, to happen? John, not? quickly, make it very quick. This is a quick one. Basically, I think one of the, the, the maybe an overriding question here, does freedom of speech al allow you to lie? Is freedom of the freedom to lie? And the answer right. would If you be, lie, yeah. then you have to pay for it. Right. Well, but, back it up you know, yes, but, you, but, but you somebody know, like Giovanni has to spend a million speech. dollars to sue you in order to get that satisfaction. I can't sue you to get that satisfaction. Anyway, hey, listen, first of all, there's a theme. Uh, I want to say thank you, everybody. It's been a good discussion tonight. Patrick, uh, uh, we'll be thinking about you, okay, and wishing you well. And you're going to the hospital when? Tomorrow, right? And you'll be hopefully out by Thursday. And uh, if, if, uh, if you need somebody to call, give me a call. You know, I'm, I'm here. I'm for you. And I think we all send our best to you. Right, everybody? 
Yes, yep. you, yes, absolutely. Big thumbs absolutely. up, as it were, or thumbs in for Brian. Okay? Anyway, thank you, Brian. <laughs> thank you, John. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Patrick. And uh, we'll see you all, uh, except for Patrick, on the morrow. Okay? Right. Thanks for joining us. And uh, I uh, have to hang up on these guys here, first of oh, all, no. so the next show can uh, start using the line. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, uh, I want to say to you uh, to stay tuned for The Intersection with Jack and Amy. And following that, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the uh, Connections show. Uh, and uh, then, of course, Gabnet all day long. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs>